Julie. And we are the Swarthy Sailors of Shelburne, mm -hmm. uh, which maybe doesn't make that much sense, but that's okay. Yeah, we don't even sail, but... <laughs> and I don't live in Shelburne kayak. anymore, but that's okay. I used to kayak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to do another haul for you. I have some books from Book Outlet that have arrived, and I've been waiting to spend time with my Ashley again. So that we can... Look at books! So we're going to start... Mm -hmm. Now this, this box is a mixed bag of tricks, folks. I don't know what's in here. I ordered it a while ago. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It's mysterious. We've been reading uh, Miss Bourne. We're almost all done that. I yeah. started the Eye of the World series because they're going to be making a TV show about it and it's rated one of the top fantasy series of all time. And Ashley recommended to me The Lies of Rock Lamora. Which I just got that first book in the mail, so I'm excited to really good series. Yeah, that too. So, all right, the paper. All right, I'll keep that paper. so we can talk about price points, and then we have should we need to? Except I don't look at it though because it has all the titles. Yeah, in the I kind of forget. So, oh, there's one right <laughs> on top. So we'll Ooh. start. Yes! Oh, that one looks fancy. This is the case of beasts, the Fantastic Beasts. Companion book, I guess, and uh, I got this because I love Harry Potter and anything to do with those Let's kind of things. Look. This is like very fancy. Yeah, I, I got a scratch and dent copy, so it was cheaper, and uh, it it's, it's got like a magnet holding it together. Boo boo's button. Oh, ooh, it's very fancy. Yeah, it's like lots of nice pictures and even like pop out things. Yeah, I like as that. Well. Ooh, oh look, and like little envelopes. Yeah, that could be a whole video all itself, just going yeah. through that thing. So, um, that one was only fifteen seventy nine. Yeah, that's Scratch and Dent. I don't remember if it was like 20 bucks or something for it, not Scratch and Dent, but it has all kinds of stuff in the movies and little extras. And I love books, like, I'm so much a kid like that. It's like, what is this classified file? Like, what is in there? I don't know, but we'll find out. Oh, there's lots of them. Yeah, anyway, yes. and a wand permit application form. <laughs> Anyway, nerd nice. <laughs> I got paper. I got paper. Okay. Orson Scott Card Ender's Game. Yeah. I have never classic. read this. It's a classic. I had to get it because I felt ashamed of myself. But I have never, <laughs> <laughs> never read that. I've done the read bread rays. I've done like some science fiction and it's like that, but I never read Ender's game, so. That's a nice little hardback, like, pocket version. Yeah, it's It'd be cute. easy to travel with if you need to, like, grab, go on a plane or something. I saw Red Bastard here, I think, already, so. Oh, I know. well, you know, Bastard. Maybe that's just what I want to see, but I saw that. The next book I have is Legendary, which is the second book in the Caraval series. I read Caraval, I got it from my local library, and uh, I read it, and I liked it. It's a uh, magic ish kind of thing. It's almost like a bit night circusy mm -hmm. um, in that there's like sleight of hand and environment that changes all the time and um, like a mystical carnival. Yeah, red roses and petals and going on. But there's it's like intrigue and potential murder and mystery and people get stabbed and who can you trust kind of thing. And I liked it. So this was the second book and that's a YA series so kind of sorry. I just want to look no. at cover. Okay, it's black. Anyway, that's that. Very nice. The but legend I, has chosen you. Yeah. If you do like YA or if you're a teacher, like I used to teach high school English, so I was always looking for interesting books that the kids would like, and I think that's a winner. Just saying. I started the first one, but I haven't oh, did you? finished it oh. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is, uh, this is for my brother's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway. Do we need to keep it a secret? Or we can just wait until after his birthday to post the video. <laughs> Star Wars. My brother's a big Star Wars fan. And uh, this is Star Wars Insider Icons of the Galaxy. So Insider um, is like looking at the actual film back in the day. And it has interviews with all the different characters. It looked like it would be a nice book for a Star Wars fan. And it has all kinds of cool pictures and articles and like comic book covers and art from the show and stuff for the vintage original Star Wars series. So I think he's going to get a kick out of that. Yeah, it's like nice quality too. Like it's like magazine pages, but thick and shiny. And it has the toys and everything. Like yeah. It has, it has like all avenues of the original Star Wars series. Very and nice. 
like some yeah. art. How do you stuff. design the character? It's a baseball glove on your face. That's great. Let's go with that. I like this. Java's dancing girl, Weeba Weeba, later renamed Yarna Del Gargan, wore a foam latex prosthetic on her stomach to simulate additional breasts. Yeah, she had tons. So I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but just yeah. FYI, that was the original one, but she ended up being less, um, well, having less boobs, I think. Mm. Anyway. There's a lot of characters with a lot of I don't know, I haven't seen the original Star Wars Street. in a while. Yeah. Although my brother, also a huge Star Wars fan, and I've definitely seen them, like, millions of times. <laughs> my brother wants to play Star Let's play Star Wars, Star Wars per Trivial Pursuit. I'm like, I'll play, but I will lose. You know you're going to lose. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Ooh, okay, a box set. set. This is the Six of Crows duology, um, and it is by... Leah Ardugo, or Lee Ardugo. I think there's a B there. What is it? Leah. Lee Bardugo. Or Lee B. Ardugo. <laughs> We're it's awesome. very confusing. No idea. No idea. It was a box that, I, again, I think this, I think this may be a YA fantasy series. Um, it's definitely fantasy. So I love fantasy and I like YA. Sometimes as a break from the heavy duty epic yeah. fantasies and stuff I read, but um, and also just like the crappiness of being an adult. Yeah, like like they're going through crap, but it's like adolescent stuff that you've already been through, so it feels less stressful. Yeah. I think than reading like. <laughs> well, and there's also more like things build up more. It's like if you ever read a YA romance, it's like our knees touched under the table, and you're like yes. You know, That's like true. that was big time, and now it's just like you know, we go on one date, we're we're banging. Like there's no, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, there's no build up, there's not the anticipation and stuff like that <laughs> in in stories that you read about all snow. Right? And like yeah, no, it harkens back to those. Like that's why I like the Victorian literature mm -hmm. where. You know, it's like, yeah, if, if I like touched your hand lightly, that was the sexiest thing that happened in the whole yeah. book. But it is so, the tension is yeah. part of the joy. Read so. me poetry in the garden. <laughs> yes, he likes me. So good. Yeah. So we'll yeah, see. I, I know a lot of people have reviewed those books and I have to not watch any of it because I don't want to ruin it. I like to go into a book as blind as I can and make my own decisions on whether I like that or they did a good job world building and stuff like that before I she, to she also apparently wrote the shadow and bone trilogy oh, so okay. I guess if you get these and you like those you might want to try uh, those and yeah. that duology was only 10.09 yeah, it's not bad uh, next book I got <laughs> we're geeks the geeks guide to unrequited love <laughs> and Yay. it's a novel by Sarvenaz Tash Totally butchered that name as well. Um, this is another YA kind of romance book, but I said, I read the description and okay, it's like <laughs> Comic Con, Robert Sink, a weekend immersed in practically everything we love as individuals and together. And it said something about uh, Graham meets his best friend Roxy when he moved into her neighborhood eight years ago and she asked him which Hogwarts house he'd be sorted into. Like, come on. I mean, I'm not going to enjoy this book. Definitely. <laughs> that's like, that's the dream scenario. I really, dream right? of someone moving into my neighborhood <laughs> who's a hot dude and says, hey, what Hogwarts hard, hard house do you want? I'm like, oh, Ravenclaw, baby, get out of my yeah. house. We would just start planning the wedding. Yeah, grabby, day, grabby, probably. not too shabby, you know what I mean? Like, um, anyway. Yeah, this does look cute. It looks very cute. Yeah, it's just a short little I bet. Uh, yeah, I bet you could read it in like an, an hour or something. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Oh, he's got a little dragon on a leash there. It's really cute. Do you see that? It's yes. I want a pet dragon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next we have Lev Grossman's The Magicians. Magicians. I've yeah. never read this series. Have you watched the show? No. Okay. Yeah. I read this book and did not finish reading the series. Mm. Um but the show was good because you didn't no, like the book or uh, it just didn't it was good like the world was very good it is like a grown up Harry mm -hmm. but like a more grown up kind mm -hmm. of Harry Potter situation and I think probably if I went back to it and really just like went through the part where I mm -hmm. kind of stopped which happens a lot I'd probably really like it I just well that's kind of how I feel about the V Schwab the Shades of Magic series. I read the first book. I just finished it this week and I'm like, everyone loved this book. And I just kind of felt like, 
meh. Like, it was kind of hard to get through, and I felt bad because everyone liked it so much. I'm like, no, not for me. Just, I have the box set, and I will finish reading them, but I just kind of, like, the character building, I didn't really feel anything for any character. Yeah, I like the guy's coat, but I liked him. Yeah. And, like, the worlds, there was a lot of, there's 400 pages, so you'd think there'd be enough description <laughs> and stuff to get you attached to it, but I right. just didn't find that I was. I was like, eh, it's kind of cold. Yeah, I also, so. like, I have an issue with, like, private school things. I mean, obviously, I get love Harry Potter and stuff, but the elitism is a little much for me, and I feel like maybe that was kind of in this book. But... I hope you enjoy it. It does say... Let me back, know what yeah, you think. I'll, I'll let you know. It does say on the back, George R. R. Martin, his uh, praise for his book, he says, The Magicians is to Harry Potter as a shot of Irish whiskey is to a glass of wheat tea. <laughs> Hogwarts was never Well, like and not George R. R. Martin. I mean, you know, yeah. he, he he obviously doesn't like uh, soft no. things. But, uh, no, the world was very good, though. I will say I will say that from what I did read. And I would read this. Yeah, I'll, I'm curious. So I do that sometimes. I never used to. I always used to start and then finish everything I started reading. But kind as I get older, I I don't have time. If, if yeah. it's not, if I'm not, like, so intrigued with it, I have to have to read it. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, eh. I have started doing next. that, too. Like, I'll, I'll give it 100 pages, usually, at least yeah. 100 pages. And after that, if it's like, no... Like, that's like uh, King of Thorns, Prince of Thorns, that series, too. I read a book and a half. And it took me a whole year to read the first book because it was on my bedside table forever. And I just, like, uh, it was, like, it was, I don't know. And people loved that series, too, and I just could not get into it. Well, but even something like uh, Name the Wind mm -hmm. by Patrick Rothfuss is one of my favorite book. current, mm -hmm. like, series going on. I started that twice. Mm-hmm. And, like, couldn't get through the kind of introductory chapter, because yeah. I was like, this is weird. Yeah. Uh, and then finally I did, and it's one of my favorite series. So, like, I you know, sometimes thing. you got to go read I had it. the same thing with that book, because at first you're really confused. You're, like, at this tavern, and there's these things outside, and you're like, <laughs> what the heck, this chronicler's here, and da, da 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 But then when you actually get to the guy's story, quotes, like, you yeah. know, you start in there, you start... And it's, it's really It's good. really good. Anyway... And so, but sometimes you just have to put stuff, something down, yeah. and then pick it back up, and that's okay. Or have a friend that's read it said, "Hey, keep going. Yeah, you'll like it, that's and then you'll find out that you do that's like it." So the next book I have is the Jane Austen Project, and uh, I like Victorian literature. Uh, mm -hmm. Studied it in university a bit. I like the Brontes. I like a bit darker yeah. than Austen. Like yeah. I like the Brontes better than Jane Austen, but well, and Austen's kind of more the romantic. Period. Is it like a little bit before that more Victorian kind of s style? Although, mm -hmm. well, okay, now I feel really dumb because the Brontes might have been the same time period. <laughs> anyway, I have a message enough, reading, but I don't know. The Brontes in the cemetery, the boys had that out of <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the Austin. So, so I was like, just curious about this because I can harken back to what I remember about Jane Austen's books. And uh, it's, it's two researchers from the future are sent back in time to meet Jane Austen Ooh. and recover a suspected unpublished time travel. Time travel, Jane Austen. I'm down. Mm -hmm. I want to borrow this one. You know, and they're supposed to recover a suspected unpublished book. Oh. So, you know, they're rigorously nice. trained in what we know of Jane Austen. I'm curious to see what she'll be like yeah. in person. In also, the this author yeah. looks a lot like my Victorian literature professor from university. <laughs> I'm just saying, Might like, be her. they kind of have the same face and hair. She looks like, everything. you got a D plus and you earned it. That's the look. That and that like. was my Victorian life <laughs> professor. Like, she ended up being cool, mm -hmm. but, like, when I first met her, I was like, Scared. dragon lady. Scared. Yeah, no. I got yelled at in a university class for, like, passing notes to my friend. That's, <laughs> that's how bad that was. Yeah. yeah uh, so, um, yeah, that looks great. That was good. All right. Yep. Next. Okay. We're so, trying to go through these a little bit yeah. faster this time because our last we video, get, our friends couldn't finish because it was get, too long. We get thrown off topic sometimes. Um, this book is a Sherilyn Kenyon book called Son of No One, and I bought it because I've never read anything by Sherilyn Kenyon. No, the name is familiar, but oh, I don't know. Oh, you ever go to Chapters or Indigo or any of those bookstores, and you'll see an entire Sherilyn Kenyon section. It's like J.R. Robb. It's like 
or it's like all the authors like James yeah. Patterson has an entire yeah. area. Yeah, Nora lives. Roberts. Who yeah. is J J J Rob? Yeah, they're the same yeah. person. So like you have an entire section of books and people buy them like crazy. So people have been buying these books. I worked at chapters, you know, back in university. So you know. People would always be buying these books, and I never read one of hers, and she has a skull scarf on in the back. She looks pretty cool. Yeah. I want that thrown for my I'm house. glad you commented on it, because if you didn't, I was definitely going to, because, like, I want to be your man. friend. Man. And she's sitting on, like, a throne. Like, yeah. that is a bad-ass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I think from what I know of her, I think she usually writes, like, paranormally romancy fantasy books. You know, they might have dragons, I'm assuming, in this one. And uh, <laughs> what if there is dragon? no dragons when there's a giant dragon on the cover? <laughs> it happens, maybe. Would it be disappointing? Maybe dragon um, is just a code name. Yeah, no, that looks good. So, this is where you're going to start the real your time. Uh, yeah. Kenyan journey. Yeah, and I hope that that's book. a first book. I don't know. I don't know if it's like book 10 in a series because I, I tried to find out, but. It's a Dark Hunter novel, and there's more in the Dark Hunter series, but yeah, I don't that's know. That's mysterious. Let's see if it says. It it sometimes looks... they'll say on the... See, but there's so many different... Yeah, that's very hard It doesn't to say, know. like, book one or book two, so... Who knows? Well, I guess you'll find out when you yeah. start reading yeah. it. Oh, if you're super lost, you'll be like, well, I guess I, I gotta find back. another one. And the last book I have today is... Raymond Feist. What was that Sherlyn Kenyon book? Anyway. That was 360. That's why I bought it, because it was on sale. I was like, you know what? It's a hardcover. Even if it's not the it. first. It was only uh, three three, 369. Yeah. The last book I have in this box is Raymond E. Feist's King of Ashes. Raymond Feist has written quite a few books as well, and I've, again, never read anything by him. No, neither have I. Mm -hmm. My husband has all of them, oh, okay. I think, at our, like, probably most of them at our house, um, but I, no, I never have. Yeah, so I, ooh, there's a big map. I love a book with a big map. This is actually kind of cute. I like so. big maps, and I cannot lie. Oh, oh, <laughs> let's do a quest. Look at the quest. You know, I, I, and I always read a book, and then I have to go back to the map and be like, where am I? I'm so confused, but I love it. So, World of Garn. 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 <laughs> Looks like interesting. It looks like Australia. There's like uh, Australia in the bottom and some kind of flat. Some yeah. Flat I don't know what that is. And then ice flows on top. It's just a chunk of North America. Yeah, basically. It off and put on top of Australia. This is Canada. This is America. This is a squish got Canada. Some Central America. It does look here. like Alaska over here. I know. It, it really does sure. look like Canada just, a little bit. It's just smushed down. You know, Detroit is and even well, yeah, and even that could be Maine there. Like yeah. anyway, he looks kind of uh, creepy in that picture, though. No, he looks a little like don't, lecherous. Don't tell Raymond Feist where you live. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's this, it's this thing yeah. that's making him look kind of serious. creepy. Serious. <laughs> like, where are his glasses sitting? They're right. Okay, I thought if it was like this, <laughs> more. He so. was trying to be like super sexy. <laughs> So yeah, I don't really know much about this book other than uh, his makes his long way return with the first volume of his new heroic fantasy series, The Fire Main Saga, an electrifying tale of two young men whose choices will determine a world's destiny. So anytime I hear the fantasy book, and he's got has... red hair. How? Okay, this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. As a side note, how many fantasy books have you read, or maybe it's just me lately, where the characters? Have red hair because redheads are super, the best. Superpowers already genetically altered. But I married one. I'm friends with a lot of them actually, yeah, but yeah, you know, Julie. This guy know. supposedly the main character is redhead in here, and Quoth redhead. Yeah. Wheel of Time redhead. Really? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Ron, Ron from Harry Potter, but he's not. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I love Ron. Yeah, but he's he's actually. not like the main character. But I'm just thinking like. It seems like every... Oh! And that V.E. Schwab, Dark Shade of Magic, the main character in there. He's also auburn, reddish-brown. Anyway. Yeah. So, man, you gotta get into red hair. If there's any red-haired actors out there, get applying for these fancy movies because yes. you're everyone... Get applying. Like it is like an application get, get process applying. where they're like, check box. Red hair. Like <laughs> Not like you have to put any kind of picture of yourself in an acting uh, application, which you always do. 
Oh my god, that's funny. Yeah. Anyway, so that's it. That's it for that. That's box number one for today is done. Yeah, thanks so much for tuning in, and thanks. we'll be back with another. Like and subscribe. I guess you can subscribe now. We're going to have at one least more. three videos all together. <laughs> Um, only uh, people that we actually know are watching them, but that's okay because some of those people live far away and they to like those people too. Thanks for watching our video. We miss you